sodium bisulfate's a very versatile product. Um, it goes into pet food, goes into human food, goes into salad dressings, Gatorade, can also be used as a litter treatment. But really, it's a, an effective pH modulator. And part of the reason I was brought on at Jones Hamilton was to help with the poultry nutrition side. We've been seeing um, some benefit with it, a lot of benefit with it in broiler feed and how it's helping improve average daily gain, feed conversion, and weight, just through some different mechanisms. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm your host today, Kelly Walmsley, and I'm joined by Dr. Dana Diddy. Hey, Dana. Hey, Kelly. How are you? I'm good. This is a fun episode because um, we work together so <laughs> on a lot of different <laughs> things, including the topic today. So I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. So a little bit of background behind you. Um, so you went to K-State for your bachelor's and then University of Nebraska um, at, at UNL, right, in Lincoln for your PhD. And then you went into Smart Chicken. I guess, give me a little more into that. Yeah. So I was at University of Nebraska with Sheila Purdom um, and wrapping up my PhD there. And Smart Chicken was looking for a nutritionist at the time. So interviewed. And fortunately, they they decided to hire me. And um, I was there for, oh, around 10 years. Um, and I basically oversaw anything and everything with live production at one point. So had broiler, had the nutrition duties and then added overseeing the broiler techs and then just e evolved from there to where for a little while I was overseeing live production as well. That's quite the the big hat, big brimmed hat you wore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm back to nutrition. So uh, so the now, I guess, in your position now, you're poultry nutritionist for Jones Hamilton, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. People have heard of Jones Hamilton. They're probably thinking of not nutrition. <laughs> so tell, let's go into that. Exactly. People think litter treatment, right? Um, but Jones Hamilton, we produce uh, hydrochloric acid and sodium bisulfate. And hydrochloric acid sold on a separate market. Um, and then sodium bisulfate is a very versatile, uh, pro it's a very versatile product. Um, it goes into pet food, goes into human food, goes into salad dressings, Gatorade. Um, and then can also be used as a litter treatment. But really, it's a, an effective pH modulator. And part of the reason I was brought on at Jones Hamilton was to help with the poultry nutrition side. We've been seeing um, some benefit with it, a lot of benefit with it in broiler feed and how it's helping improve average daily gain, feed conversion and weight um, just through some different mechanisms. So we're talking about sodium bisulfate and adding it into the diet. So how, um, you know, how are we putting this into the diet? We're putting it on top. We're formulating it in. What do you, what do you recommend? So it is a non-chloride sodium source. So it's used in place of if you're using S-carb or something along those lines to help balance out your chloride. But um, so that's how it fits in. It contributes sodium. But beyond that, it does modulate feed pH, and then it also has this intestinal health component as well. So it's helping with um, changing the composition of the mucosal layer of the intestine to help protect the villus and the um, tight junctions to reduce gut permeability. What you're going for is you're thinking about, you know, you've been moving in the direction and um, Jones Hamilton on establishing it from a standpoint of a, more of a functional feed ingredient, right? We're positioning it as a functional feed ingredient. And also it just enhances what you're putting in the diet already. We're finding that it's having a good response with exogenous enzymes like phytase. And it's also is helping with support another gut health package so, such as saponins as well. So it's really, in a, it, it's really an asset to help amplify what you're already doing in those diets. Jones Hamilton has become the poultry industry's animal health authority by combining research-driven products with expert support. Focused on science, safety, and sustainability, our team has created AFG, a unique functional feed ingredient to support gut health. AFG reduces gut permeability, increases calcium and phosphorus digestibility, 
and also increases pellet mill throughput. The proof of our company's success can be found in bird performance, all backed by our 30 years of research. Learn more at jones-hamilton.com. When thinking about how someone should utilize AFG, um, I know you got an uh, inclusion of six pounds per ton that you're kind of recommending, um, but kind of in the, I guess, for how to use it and what you're kind of talking to nutritionists about, uh, kind of what's your approach and how do they kind of view this um, AFG? It's, it's a little tricky. I always think about it when I was in the nutritionist's shoes of, okay, I've got, I've got someone talking to me about a product. What, what box am I going to put this product in? What, what am I going to, where am I going to put it? And the thing with AFG that makes it really kind of unique is that it's really a three pronged approach of how it functions. It does modulate, it modulates the feed pH. It is a gut health product where that it helps support intestinal health. And then it also has a feed milling component where it can help, has the potential to help with throughput. And so really this product, you know, it's, it's, it's really fun just because it, it is that three pronged approach of how, how it can fit. And I guess at the end of the day, yes, it is a, it is a gut health product, but it's, it's so much more than that. It really is. So I guess let's go into maybe some mode of action on some from the gut health standpoint or from, um, you know, the standpoint of being able to um, use it in formulation, however you want to <laughs> go about it. Yeah. So formulating with it, like I said, it pulls in sodium. So making sure, you know, you're keeping your chloride balanced and we are recommending a six pound per ton inclusion rate right now. But then the reason it, we recommend that is because we're seeing a good module, we do modulate the pH with that. And we are seeing a pH reduction of about half a unit to three quarters of a unit, depending on what other um, ingredients you have in that diet. And with that, you're able to see, you're able to, amp to support the exogenous enzymes, but then also we're able to um, support gut health. And with that six pound inclusion rate, Kelly, in your lab, we found that we increased villus height, we reduced intestinal permeability, took those results and um, wanted to break that down further to see what we were doing, the mucosal layer and how we can change the mucin composition. So we're finding that with sodium bisulfate, we are changing the mucosal composition, mucosal layer composition and make it more acidic and make it less hospitable to a pathogenic bacteria and therefore helping increase that villus height and protect that, that those enterocytes from damage. Yeah. And then on top of it too, we're also able to, um, we're seeing some benefits in the feed mill. Um, mm -hmm. with food. Yeah, that's, it's so cool. Um, that just all these different, um, avenues that you've been able to kind of go down and, um, show, you know, I guess just really trying to, to explore and show its full benefit um, and the different possibilities that there might be. Um, I think it's, it's really exciting. So let's um, get into, we talked a, a brief about some of this, but um, let's get into how it works in the feed mill, because that's kind of cool. We know sodium bisulfate is hygroscopic. And with that increase of moisture, we saw, you know, again, depending on ingredients and what you're using in your feed, we could see increased pellet quality, but really um, a really cool benefit we've been seeing. Um, Joe Moritz saw this at West Virginia, and then we did um, did do a little field trial at a commercial feed mill where we saw an increase in throughput. And thinking that since it's hygroscopic, pulling moisture into the mixer, it's helping lubricate the dye. With the mash is helping lubricate that dye and helping with that pellet get through. So it's, it's a really cool thing. I mean, you don't hear very often of a feed additive having all of these different aspects. Um, yeah. and you know, you don't really like a nutritionist, we're thinking always of the, the feed and the bird and how to make, how to make that bird grow and support that bird's growth. Um, and the feed mill, you know, it's kind of like, oh yeah, we gotta, we gotta remember them. And, you know, similar to other products in the mill, um, or ingredients in the mill that maybe 
are a little bit different to handle. We do the similar, we offer similar services to those people where we will come in and we have a milling engineer, Casey Conine, and he's wonderful and works with the mill managers and works with um, your milling specialists with integrators and helps figure out the best way to deliver AFG into the mixer. Our prerogative is to make everybody's lives easier with this product. We want the full benefit, right? So we really focus on how the product is being delivered, how it's being stored and how it's being put into the mill, into the storage, whatever storage uh, container that we choose to use, whether it be bulk or tote um, and into the mixer and making sure that we uh, help the mill manager and help everybody with that too. Yeah, it's really cool. I know that like whenever we were looking into it and like some of the trials that we were making feed, I, I didn't really, I didn't even prompt the one um, mill manager um, when he was running the mill. He's like, hey, what's in this? What's in this? What's different about this diet? You know, and he's like, it's, it's kind of like driving a bus versus a Cadillac. When you put it in, it's more like a Cadillac and smooth. And I'm like, Okay, man, that sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good, but you can see it on the graphs, at least from some of the work. And that now that was a that was just making our regular trial diets, but it was it was kind of remarkable that he kind of picked up on something like that. And then we talked to him about it afterwards. But um, mm -hmm. it's kind of funny. And and that in that throughput piece is what you've kind of seen a little more consistently out of it. Um, yeah. Yes. Right. So I guess where what were the next steps? What are you guys looking at? With it, we we have seen, since we've seen such a good response with exogenous enzymes like phytase, and we also seen an increase in calcium and phosphorus digestibility, um, teasing that apart a little bit more, seeing how our pH modulation is helping with that, and then possibly kind of looking at the layer diets. We're looking at some swine applications as well, since it does lower feed pH, and that's something that the swine community really is chasing a little bit, especially in nursery pigs. Um, but really and then also teasing out more of how it's how it's really working for the um gut permeability side of things as yeah. well so that's very cool kind of some next steps for us um in the yeah. immediate future well i mean it seems like you know in any kind of thing that you're looking at there's always some kind of trade-off right and i mean if you're looking at um this um in functional feed ingredient and putting it into the, the diet and having all of these different avenues of potential benefit, um, even then you think, oh, well, then, it, you know, it could be costing like a crazy amount of money, right? Um, but the cost amount is pretty competitive, right? For From a standpoint of the ingredient that it's kind of in part replacing. Yes, it is. It is. And really the trade-off when you sit down and you break down the cost of it, and then when you look at the feed conversion benefits that you're getting from it, it does pay for itself very quickly. And and then you, you know, everything else is gravy. And it just it makes a lot of sense for people to be using, especially if you're in an NAE program and you don't have a lot of tools in your toolbox. Um, this is one thing that can really help support your program. Yeah, especially thinking about from that pH modulation um, standpoint and yes. then being able to also call upon other, you know, functions of this of sodium bisulfate that could be all these different, um, you know, with water application, litter application. And <laughs> yes, because we have PWT, PLT, and then AFG, which is the animal feed grade sodium bisulfate. So well, great. Well, thank you, Dr. Diddy. Appreciate the time. <laughs> yes, thank you, Kelly.